Okay, last video we watched was dealing with a uh, the neuron, and we kind of got into the introduction to that on how the information comes through the dendrite, comes down into the axon, or comes sorry, down to a nucleus, where it decides if the information is important. If it is important, then it moves it into the axon, and that's really what we got into in class uh, by talking about that positive negatively charged ions, how the electrical stimulation through the axon pushes that message, whatever it is, the information that's coming into that neuron, pushes it through and then shoots it down to the terminal buttons. And that's where we kind of left off at. So that's what we're going to pick up with this video now, is we're going to get into what's called the synapse, the transportation of signals. And we're going to talk about now what happens at the very last part of this process of how any, how information gets through a neuron and then shoots it into a next neuron. All right, the synapse is the transmission of one neuron to another, and it depends upon chemical messengers, which we're going to get into those called neurotransmitters. Uh, the sending signals is basically, as I mentioned before, jumps from one synaptic to the other neuron, uh, the dendrite of the next neuron, by jumping over this synaptic cleft. Okay, that is a gap between the terminal button of one neuron and the cell membrane of the other, or the dendrite of a new neuron. The sending neuron is called a presynaptic neuron, and the neuron that is receiving this information is called a postsynaptic neuron. The transmission of these signals then, how this process works, uh, basically when that electrical stimulation from the axon gets, gets shot through the uh, axon there and gets shot down to the terminal button, it then, the, the electrical stimulation hits these vesicle sacs which are full of neurotransmitters. Now there are many, many different kinds of neurotransmitters that go through your brain. Uh, right now, psychologists and scientists have been able to discover somewhere around the neighborhood of 50 uh, or so neurotransmitters, these chemical messengers that are in your brain that send out these messages. We're only going to get into a couple of them, so you don't have to know all 50. Basically, there are three classifications of these neurotransmitters. There's amino acids, there's monamines, and then there are peptides. Those are the classification of these neurotransmitters. When the synaptic vesicle fuses with the membrane wall, these neurotransmitters spill out. You can see this from the video, from the little slide here. Um, here's the vesicle sacs that are full of these neurotransmitters. When that electrical stimulation comes through, comes down from the axon here, it hits these vesicles. Depending upon what the message is, depends upon which, neurotran which neurotransmitters gets sent out. They then get sent down to the membrane wall, which you can see here. Then those neurotransmitters are shot out across the synaptic cleft, this gap. That's usually about one one thousandth thick. So it's very, very small, but it is there. And so then this shoots out across here. They have to connect up with the receptor site of the other neuron. This is the dendrite of another neuron right here. And those neurotransmitters have to connect into it at the receptor site. They then release their information. That information gets sent to the next neuron. If they do not connect, if there is not that key to fit the lock, which is kind of the expression used, then the neurotransmitter will not send the information and it basically gets sent back in what's called a reuptake into the old neuron then. So that's basically how this process works. Now we're going from electrical stimulation of the axon to a chemical stimulation here in the neurotransmitters then. The postsynaptic potential is the connection of the two messages. The postsynaptic potential, the neurotransmitters and the receptor molecule combined this causes a voltage change. So when the postsynaptic potential occurs is when the neurotransmitter here again in this picture is sent out across the synaptic cleft, connects with the receptor site of the other neuron, and sends the message through. This is called a voltage change of connection. Then the message is sent. But this is not an all or none rule. In other words, just because the neur neurotransmitter does get sent does not mean the message will get sent. There are things that could cause it to be blocked, or the key may not fit the lock, and you may not get the, sent, the message sent. 
There are two types of message. One is called an excitatory. This is a positively voltage charged. When it's an excitatory message, then the likelihood of that message getting sent from one neuron to the next is highly probable. And that's because of just because of the word excitatory. It has a great voltage. A lot of a lot of push is being shoved with this message. That is when you are very intense into something. You're listening very intently. You're really focusing in on the information and you're you're gathering it and you're really uh, having a, a lot of attention to this. If you're not having a lot of attention, if you're not focusing, I'm guessing right now there may be some of you who are not, well then you're at this point. You're inhibitory. That's a negative voltage. The likelihood then of this information that I'm trying to present to you getting into your brain, very unlikely. You may have to go back and re-listen to this video two or three times for it to maybe sink in and for you not to be focusing on something else or thinking about something else or listening to something else or whatever's going on there. You have to have a high excitatory voltage in order for you to be able to fire that information from one neuron to the next to create a memory. Neurotransmitters are then reabsorbed back up into the old neuron. This is called reuptake, and that's an important term to circle there. Neurons receive thousands of signals. It takes millions of neurons to fire in order to produce the most trifling thought. That's an important quote there. Okay, Just because you may have two or three neurons connecting here does not mean you're making a memory of this stuff. It takes thousands upon thousands sometimes of neurons all working together to build that memory. And if anywhere along that line of those neurons trying to collect that information, if it gets broken because you all of a sudden lose your attention span or you get some type of an interference or something else blocks into it or you just simply lose your focus or lose your care or lose your incentive to be listening, then it's gone and the memory's lost and you're not going to have it. That's why it's so important to be listening and to be getting this. And that's why I'm trying to keep these tapes down to about 8, 9, 10, 12, 13 minutes because you can at least during that time focus in and capture this stuff. So with this we're going to end this portion of, the, of this video and we'll move on to the next one later but if you're wanting to go back and get this information again you might want to rewatch it and that way you might be able to pick up a little bit more the second time through.